We are here at Brampton Circle in Hopkinton to meet outdoors on this beautiful August day with Maureen Bumuller to tell us a little bit from her large life over time uh, to hear how she has moved forward in life and has uh, much inspiration to share. I'm looking forward to talking with her. Hi Maureen. Thank Hi you. Cheryl for having me at your place of home in your neighborhood mm -hmm. here today, a very warm August day. And yes. we're here at Davis Street. Road, actually. Davis Road, yeah. yes. And uh, we are the only ones sitting outside because maybe it's near 90, mm -hmm. but it is beautiful uh, in this circle with trees around here. Yes. And you are a Hopkinton resident of how many years? Since 1991, 91. so 27 years, I ah, guess. Yes, and yeah. um, I actually did not want to move here when we came didn't. here. No, but it was for job-related purposes. Uh -huh. And um, after I got here, it took about three years. I really liked it, uh -huh. and we needed to move to a larger house. Yeah, and I actually said the words, "I want to stay in Hopkinton." Mm -hmm. My husband at the time was amazed, mm -hmm. but my parents had lived in Quincy for a few years at that point, and there was a drive-by shooting on their, on their street. Yeah. Hopkinton looked better by the second at uh -huh. that point. Very quiet, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so that kind of settled you in, but it took a few years? It took three years. A little adjustment get, from... And then that incident. My mother was staying with us the night it happened, and apparently there were helicopters and everything else on my parents' street. Mm -hmm. My father and one other over 80-year-old man were the only two people that slept through it. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. and it wound up being on TV on one of those mm -hmm. Pretty shows. serious. Yeah, the man so. was found in the islands I see. a few years uh -huh. after that. But Hopkinton looked very good after that. That was part of the catalyst in shaking you up. And it was. As if on cue, we hear the siren right. now because you are near the police station mm -hmm. these days. But um, yeah. that the fact that Hopkinton for the past 27 years has been a place of peace and it security to you. And it was and a good place to raise the children. You have two children? Two. Um, uh -huh. A girl who's 29, the boy is 26. Mm -hmm. And out here, like for the girls, they didn't get into the high fashion look mm -hmm. as much as the girls in the city did. So by city you mean? Boston. Boston, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because that's your story. Uh, you come from the city. You started yes. there, right? Where did you grow up? Uh, Dorchester. Uh -huh. Like yeah. near Roxbury, South Boston yes. end of things. Uh -huh. And born into a family of how many? Children? Um, I just have two brothers. Two brothers. And, and I'm the oldest. Parents. Right. So I can be bossy. And so, oh, so you're bossy of your brothers mm -hmm. that stayed with you. And so you grew up in the city uh, area of Dorchester. Yes, yeah. And, um, you know, what did you like about it as a child to be in the I city? I liked everything. Mm -hmm. It everything never occurred it. to me not to like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we could walk everywhere. My mother didn't drive. My father was working two or three jobs. So mm. we could get everywhere on our own. Yes. Uh -huh. We could even walk to the beach. It might be 20 or 30 minutes, but we could do it. By walking, taking the children and walking. Yes. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like your mother was a very determined, forward-moving mm -hmm. person. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you feel that uh, you learned from their life? Um, oh, yeah. You where they came from and uh, what they did in their work and, and parenting? Oh, yeah. Like... You did what you had to do. You did what you were supposed to do. As uh, them or as you as a All child? All of us. All of you yeah. as a family. And they came from Ireland? My father did. Okay. He came from the same village that my mother's family came oh, from, uh -huh. except she was born here. Mm -hmm. So they were perfect together because she knew everything the way he liked it to be. Mm -hmm. And he was best friends with her mother's youngest brother, mm -hmm. which is how he met my mother. Mm -hmm. So uh, they met over here? Yes. And settled in Dorchester then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. you mentioned that your father bought a home and yes. started an, a boarding a bra house? Yeah, he bought a brownstone mm -hmm. and he converted it into a boarding house. So he uh -huh. put in kitchens and bathrooms on the upper floor. By floors. himself? Yes. Wow. 
Uh -huh. well, That's industrious of him. From Ireland. He had built a house for his family over he there. Did. You do everything yourself. You don't wow. hire out uh -huh. if you don't have to. I think we could uh, benefit from uh, classes uh, from really? that. Really? Oh, away yeah. From there was that. nothing he couldn't do. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he built, he, he transformed this brownstone into a boarding house. Mm-hmm for a means of income in addition to yes. his two jobs. Yes. Uh -huh, so that and, he could uh, make ends meet and raise. Oh yeah, and have some extra. Yeah, so how was that? You know, I have a friend, his uh, parents were from Ireland and he grew up in a boarding, his parents made a boarding mm -hmm. house of their oh, home really? also. And I've heard some of his stories. How was that for you to grow up in amidst a boarding house I of thought people? it was normal. normal. It was only uh -huh. since I've been an adult, people said, you know, that's rather strange. Uh -huh. Not to yeah. me. Uh -huh. As I told you, there were only two exceptions. Everyone was very nice. Mm. And my father had made a kitchen on each of the other floors. So most of the time they did not eat with us, but they came down to talk to my mother mm. every night. And what does that do for your sense of family uh, in growing up? How, how does um, that affect it? Well, I think I accept everyone. Mm. Mm -hmm. And well, like if you, if you want to watch something on TV, you're not going to expect the whole house to be quiet for you. Yeah. Uh huh. The so world goes on around you, and you're part of it. And mm -hmm. so you learn some flexibility and a lot. getting yeah. along with other people, mm -hmm. and learn about differences. Uh, was that part? Well, of yeah. The you game just too? accept everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For so who they are, and respect of uh, the differences of people coming through, for the mm -hmm. most part. And so yeah. then um, at some point you moved beyond uh, Dorchester? Well, when I was getting out of high school, the neighborhood was changing drastically for the worse. And my father sold the house and moved to Quincy. Uh -huh. He bought half of my aunt's duplex uh -huh. down there. But it was getting too violent, violent. where we lived. Uh -huh. yeah. One of my brothers was, um, he did not go with the other boys to go to Latin school, mm -hmm. and you had to cut straight across Boston to get there, and he was assaulted coming home. Mm. When and he was a young... Teenager. A teenager. And it was hours before they could identify him. Ah, the so, person who committed the assault. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, my, my brother, they didn't, he couldn't tell oh. them who he was. Oh, dear. So, uh -huh. it was yeah, a few so months after that we moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you moved to Quincy. Yeah, and I was out of high school. All right. And I was starting uh -huh. nursing school and college uh -huh. and yeah. all that. So yeah. what made you go into nursing? Well, I wanted to go to college. I had done some volunteer work at a hospital, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. And my father was OK with me going to nursing school. Mm -hmm. He didn't like the idea of girls going to college so much, uh -huh. but so that was back school. in time of... Yeah, back in the 70s. 70s, uh -huh. Yeah, so hmm. that was so. my way out. Uh -huh. So I moved yeah. out of the house when I was 17 mm -hmm. to live in a dormitory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. And you learned about the world of nursing and yeah. went into work after that? Mm -hmm. Where did you go work and apply well, your skills? Actually, initially Quincy City Hospital. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Kearney Hospital, which is in Dorchester. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that. Yeah, and then I was working on my bachelor's by then. Because? Uh, well, they expected RNs to have a bachelor's degree, ah, and I didn't when have it. Things so. shifted a bit. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so, how did that work with working? Very and going difficult. back to college back yeah. then. Yeah, because yeah, I would fall asleep at the kitchen table mm -hmm. doing homework. Working so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not terrific with math. and. Our chemistry course was a pre-med chemistry. Mm -hmm. It was brutal. Mm. But you got through it. I did. Yeah. I don't give up. Uh -huh. so. I think that's part of, I get the sense that's part of your story, of who you are. I guess so, yeah. And um, So got through it. Finally got the degree. I think I was 31 when I got it. Mm. But that from high school, that took 14 years wow. to yes. get that bachelor's. Uh -huh. Well, congratulations. That is oh, a very hard-earned degree. And you were working in nursing. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. area did you like the best or spend the most time in? The one I liked the best was cardiac intensive care. Oh. Uh -huh. That's uh, pretty challenging. keeps you on your toes. It is. But the longer you're out of school, the more likely you are going to be in charge of a floor that you worked on 
And if you're in charge, if there's a code situation, it's expected that everything that is needed is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't giving the medical orders, but I had to know that we had everything that we needed. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. decided I needed to go to the unit. Mm -hmm. Well, once I got to there, the patients on the general floor, I might have up to 18 of them mm -hmm. in the daytime. At night, I might be the whole floor. In the unit, not more than two. Mm -hmm. And they were no sicker than the ones on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I stayed. Uh -huh. And it was interesting. Uh -huh. What yeah. would you say is uh, one of your most interesting or uh, teaching moments of, of working with those patients who are, you know, uh, maybe border life and yeah. death? Well, it's brutal honesty when you're with someone and you know they're, they're about to pass away. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they could be 80 plus, they're calling for their mother. Uh huh. Their oh, mother who isn't there anymore. Oh, but right, yeah. They, but that's who we want at that last moment huh. uh -huh. the comfort. They wanted their mother. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and held a lot of hands. Yeah. You look into their eyes and you just help them. Try to be, yeah, help them as much as you can, mm -hmm. but knowing that you can't save them. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So. But um, a very important job that probably for that purpose is not always addressed or highlighted. How right. important it is to be holding a hand with someone mm -hmm. as they're transitioning oh, from yeah. life to death. I've held more hands than I, I never kept count. Yeah. But yeah. you just did the best that you could to comfort someone. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, where, where do you think uh, that gift of comfort by someone at such a crucial point in life uh, com comes from well, for you. Well, growing up, my mother always took care of my elderly grandmother. I wound up uh, moving in with her in my 20s for a while. Uh -huh. She was one of the best roommates I ever had. Best roommates, yes. Oh, she you was were close a lot to of her. fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. A grandmother who was fun and, yeah. and sharing well, like, your room. Whenever people came to visit from Ireland, they would all come visit my grandmother. And one Saturday night, she had a phone call some people were going to come by that were visiting. At 10 o'clock at night, she made one phone call, and within a half an hour, there were 15 or 20 people in the house. Wow. She just drew people to her. Wow, yes, yeah. that's quite impressive. And she didn't I need Facebook so. or anything, right? <laughs> she didn't, but she uh -huh. loved her telephone. Mm -hmm. uh, that so was like she, her best friend. A connection friend. was important mm -hmm. to her. So, um, yeah. Well, she had grown up in Ireland. They, well, the same with my father. No mm -hmm. telephone, no electricity, mm -hmm. no running water. Uh -huh. You know, well, they would sit around over there, around the fireplace, tell stories and sing songs. Wow. Uh -huh. And here, we did a lot of visiting of family. Mm -hmm. And my father always brought his accordion, and oh, which is accordion. in my house here. Oh, you have it. I do. Uh -huh. And do I, you play a little accordion? Uh -huh. In his memory, yeah. three perhaps? blind mice, three blind do mice? re yes. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I think accordion is kind of a lost art. We don't hear. Oh, it is. Yeah, uh, playing. Yeah, anymore. my daughter's husband, who's from Hopkington, Michael Page. Uh, he's a well, he's a musician. That's not what he does for work, hmm. but he wants that accordion. Uh, but he's uh, the only musically uh, gifted person. Uh huh. I so see. So he will get that. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, well, that sounds like a very special family uh, gift of uh, legacy. Oh, anyway. it is, yeah. I wish I could have done more but with the accordion, but it, I just didn't have that gift. Well, um, you never know, you know, the next day. <laughs> Things mm -hmm. could change and your fingers could fly on it. Who knows? That's right. My, in my mother's house, they had a piano. Mm -hmm. She could play piano. Ah, uh-huh. So you grew up in some music, you grew up in the midst of uh, storytellers mm -hmm. uh, to help uh, entertain one another, yes. and your grandmother was a party uh, person. Uh, yeah, without <laughs> knowing it. She was ahead knowing. of her time. Uh -huh. And then, so, and you're working at a, as a nurse, and then you moved to Hopkinton. What, what was yeah. the catalyst for well, that? I got married in the meantime, and his job had us out in L.A. for a few years and then Washington, D.C. for a few years. Then he had an offer of a job in Southboro. Uh, Do you very want to different move? from, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I like Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. It reminded me of New England. 
There were green trees. Uh -huh. There were brick buildings. It felt normal. Mm -hmm. L.A. never felt normal. Mm. Uh -huh. As lovely as it was. Uh -huh. um, well, quite some uh, different, interesting places to live. And so you oh, come, yeah. he, your ex-husband gets a job in Southboro? Yes, yes. So and we so came out here. That's how we wound up how you in Hoppington. Here. And here you were still working as a nurse? At that point, I was home with a baby, about to have another one. Uh -huh. So as you settle in, you yes, you so, have two children, yeah. and you shift in life to being at well, yeah. home with your children. And he traveled half the time, so mm -hmm. I really couldn't take a job, right. well, without getting a lot of child care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, is this the time also you became involved in caring for your elderly parents? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, by that time, my father was actually born in 1913. So he was well into his 40s before my brothers and I came along. Mm -hmm. So my mother needed some help with him. Yes. He had Alzheimer's. And I, oh, okay. And it, they were living in their home? Yes. Still? Yeah. And my mother, Wow. well, it was 24-7. Uh-huh. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, she really had a hard-working life, yeah. right? Right through the end of her life? Well, almost. My father passed away five years before she did. And she finally had a chance to sit down and read a book. Huh. And I was uh -huh. so happy that she had a few good years at the end. Mm -hmm. More peace and yes. relaxing. And she could do what she wanted. Uh -huh. so. so that must have been nice for you to see. It was, yeah. What is the trick for helping? Many of us are in that kind of a situation now of helping our elderly parents to well, live the best they can right. independently or somewhat independently. Yeah. Well, Forget about yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have a life mm -hmm. at that point. And I worked very hard on getting home care arrangements. Mm -hmm. My mother didn't want it, but she had to have something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I just went back and forth. I could do that driving my sleep. Yeah. I wouldn't sleep. Yeah. But and you were juggling fun. that with your own children yes. who needed your care as well. Mm -hmm. So it sounds yeah. familiar of a pattern of a very hardworking woman, yeah. uh, similar to your mother. Uh, but however, I remember you said your parents wanted a different life than theirs in a way. Right. Well, they wanted education for uh -huh. their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of my brothers went to college. The other one, to my knowledge, did not. But um, uh -huh. but everyone did their best. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, they did. And they were cared for. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, completely. By with the help of you um, yeah. to transition them um, as, as they um, yeah. came to the end of their life. Yeah. And um, so then you stopped nursing, and as your children got a little older, there yeah. you began became involved. From what I understand, in the community, I know I you did, as a. Yeah. Uh, I have um, met you and become friends with you as a mm -hmm. community person. Um, yeah, well, once I had the time to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, the it wasn't I could a leave. time to pick up a book, though, apparently, no. for you. Uh, um, it was time to dig your feet in and get involved. Yeah, I am starting, well, I'm in a book club, too. Good. And that uh -huh. ensures I read one book a month. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I got away from reading for many years. So you love reading? Yes, uh -huh. always did, yeah. And, uh... What is, uh, what is your favorite type of literature or reading? I actually like nonfiction the mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. I don't like romance novels or mm -hmm. any of that silly stuff. Uh -huh. And then what else uh, did you become involved with in community for your work? Well, for work, it was always the job site. So once I had the, ch once the kids were, well, a baby and three years old, I got a job at the Brigham Hospital. Oh, okay. In uh -huh. Boston, and as a um, nurse again. Yes, okay. but I was doing discharge planning on the weekends. Oh, uh -huh. that's an interesting and important is, job yeah. to help people transition back out of the hospital. Yeah, and, and I found worked. I was making calls on the Mass Pike even, because uh -huh. I didn't. I wanted voice-to-voice -voice contact mm -hmm. to uh, set up these arrangements. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't trust easily. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk to the person that would be doing mm. all this. Uh-huh. Well, very responsible also yeah. for looking after people. 
Mm -hmm. And that seems to be what I'm good at. So well, one of the things. And then in your spare time, you became involved at HCAM TV Studios, yeah. which I know about. Oh, that was fun. And, and met you. Yeah. You've done camera work there. Yes. Through the years, yeah. and you have been involved in the Garden Club. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, and the past two years since I had the stroke, yeah. I've, I've always been on the committee that decorates the gazebo at the holidays. Oh, yeah, well, which is beautiful. Well, I cannot hang decorations, but what I could do is untangle the lights. Uh -huh. So I'd be sitting there untangling lights, totally wrapped up in oh, lights. That requires a lot of patience and commitment. It did, there. but the, the lights couldn't go on if they mm -hmm. weren't untangled. That's right. And then um, also you've been a member of the Democratic mm -hmm. uh, Committee in yeah. town, town committee. I started that just as my daughter was getting out of high school. And I had always believed in things, but I wanted to be part of something that made a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but that got me into trouble a few times. Uh -huh. If I was at a house for dinner and um, everyone there was Republicans, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they actually picked on us. Okay. Yeah, n not nice. But well, yeah. with some time and perspective, and what you said about growing up in a boarding house, what, with your wisdom now, what would you say is uh, something in this very charged time of our country, mm. uh, focusing on uh, uh, our different um, allegiances in mm -hmm. so many uh subcategories, right? Yeah. Um, well, even some people I grew up with, I've had to tell them, more than one of them, we cannot talk politics anymore. Uh -huh. Don't bring it up. Uh -huh. Because and they would get angry at what I was yeah, saying. To keep the peace. And right. what do you think is a bridge to help people start working together? Well, people have to be willing to entertain other ideas besides them, their uh -huh. own. Yeah. yeah. Well. And that is a I won't even go there right, right. now. <laughs> we only have five more minutes. Okay. I want to talk, you are here in a wheelchair today. Yes. Um, uh, which is something more recent you've been dealing with. I understand you had some back surgeries and what? a stroke two years yeah, ago. Yeah, I had back surgery. I had a hip replaced. And a year after that, I had a stroke. And you were in stroke rehab, and you told me this interesting story about how you were seeing people younger than you there. Yeah, they were in their 20s and 30s Having and they had had a stroke. Uh -huh. So I felt luckier by the minute. Huh. Yeah, which is uh, a valuable perspective to yeah. acquire. Oh, you have to. Uh, to help you get on, which obviously mm -hmm. you seem to be doing. Um, you have done so much work oh, in yeah. helping others in different ways in community and yeah. family. Yeah, and I didn't like selling my townhouse, but yeah. I can't go up and down a flight of stairs independently. Yeah. And uh, all my kids moved out of state. They yeah. got bigger. Uh -huh. And I wasn't working, so mm -hmm. it was clearly time. And now into a, a space of 450... 400 square, square feet. feet. Uh -huh. Yeah. So how do you how do, you do that? Uh, oh, it was hard. Yeah. I have a woman here in town, Tammy Waltzman. Uh -huh. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. She helped me for a year and a half to downsize, and I had to get rid of four rooms of furniture, hmm. half my clothes, half my shoes, things I did not need anymore, yeah. and I didn't want to get rid of them. But mm -hmm. but she helped you with that. Oh, yeah. And, and now you're living more simplified. Yes, and which is a positive thing. It seems more peaceful also. Mm -hmm. But... It has not been an easy road to get there. No, no, obviously not. You've been through a lot of challenges. Yeah, um, I didn't need that one, but mm -hmm. oh well, I'm yeah. still here, so. And you're moving forward uh, with determination and positivity mm -hmm. and you're healing, it sounds like. I'm trying, yeah. 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 And um, so uh, we're almost out of time, but I, I wanted you to give a little advice. Where's, you think, the best place to go in the world you were telling me earlier uh, in Boston oh a vacation spot let's see I have well to I love that I love that Castle Island everybody has to go to Castle Island you yes said. and yes. I have to get there this summer uh -huh. and why is that what what's so great about Castle Island I'm at peace when I'm there uh -huh. yeah. and have you ever seen any of the things they're they're on the internet um, the water releases negative ions okay which elevates our mood. Uh -huh. So 
in the past, if I've been in Boston for something, I bring a brown bag lunch, and I go down to the parking lot, and I eat my lunch on the water. Hmm. Uh -huh. That's a nice image. It and is, yeah. It, uh, it likely can bring you peace when you're not there, as well as your hope oh, for the next can. time you get there. Yeah. And I hope you get there very soon. I'm hoping you too. You are a very inspiring woman, and I thank you very much for your time today in this yeah. interview. Oh, thank and you. And I wish you good healing and moving forward. And I learned from you today, too. So thank you very much, okay. Maureen. Thank you. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? <laughs>